All right, let's look at calculating the current in a parallel circuit here. Let's say I have a 120 volt source, I have a 30 ohm resistor and a 40 ohm resistor. So two different types of resistors. Now I have Ohm's law, uh, which tells me that the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. Um, and that is still true. So if I consider my voltage here, I'm going to keep my voltage in green just to be consistent. Um, that means that's the energy per charge the, that is that the charges have as they leave the battery. Now, when they come here, some chargers are going here, and they and some chargers are going here. They can have two options to go through. And they basically, once they get through that resistor, they don't want to go to the other resistor. They want to get right back to the battery. That's the whole point. They want to get back to the other side of the battery. That's where the pressure is. So really, they get to drop their whole amount of energy right across that resistor. And it's the only one they have to go to. So if they got 120 volts, there's 120 volts across each of those resistors. So, okay, 120 volts over, let's say, the 30 ohm resistor. And I'm going to get a current of, let's take my current red. Oh, there's a nice fuchsia color there. 120 divided by 30, I'm going to get 4 amps of current going through this resistor for amps. I usually like to draw an arrow for current because it's the actual charges flowing. It kind of reminds me of that. Now, if that is true, then I can do, I can ask myself, okay, what's the current in the other resistor? Is it going to be the same or not? Some of you are already thinking, Mr. J, it's a different resistance. Of course, it's not going to be the same. And you would be correct. So let's say divide by the 40 ohm resistor, and that gives gonna give me a current of 120 divided by 40, three amps. Huh. The current the branch with the higher resistance had a lower current. Shocker? Not really. That's Ohm's law. That's what it tells us. It's if there's more resistance, it's limiting the flow. That's literally what it's resisting. So if I want to keep track of this. Um, a lot of times we use a table to do that. Um, so we have, if we named these like resistor A and resistor B, and we have the source, uh, which is the voltage source down here. We have resistor A, we have resistor B, and we'll keep track of it in total resistance and current and voltage. So if I'm keeping track of this here, um, A was 40 ohms, B was 30 ohms. They had a current in the, in the B resistor, a current of 4 amps. And this had a current of 3 amps. And in terms of voltage, they had 120 across both because they're in parallel. And they are both connected directly to that battery, basically. Um, so... What about the source then? Well, the source is 120 volts because it's well, we decided that was the beginning of the problem. But how much current is going through that source is being supplied by the source? Well, it has to supply both branches here. You got to give four amps to the 30 ohm resistor. You got to give three amps to the sorry, four amps to the 30 ohm resistor, three amps to the 40 ohm resistor. And that all has to come from the source. So 4 amps plus 3 amps equals 7 amps. All of that 7 amps has to come from that source. Great. And if I wanted to determine an equivalent resistance, basically to figure out what's the actual total resistance of the circuit, well, then I can look at the voltage divided by the current. Just rearrange Ohm's law, and that's... 120 volts over 7 amps, which is what the, the source is experiencing. And that gives me a not pretty number, but that's okay. Divided by 7 equals yeah, 17.1. Yeah, it's okay. We'll go with it. 17.1 ohms. And all of these are in ohms. And if you notice, that total resistance is less than either one of these. And it should be. If we have more resistors in parallel, we're opening more doors.